Hi, my name is Saskia Vogel. I'm a writer and translator from Swedish, and I'm going to read to you today from the Europa 28 anthology, Writing by Women on the Future of Europe. It's a Hay Festival project uh, published by Comma Press, edited by Sophie Hughes and Sarah Cleave. I'm reading an essay by one of my, one of my favorite Swedish writers, Carolina Romqvist. It's called Everything I Have, I've Been Given. On the morning I sit down to write this, a debate over Europe's future is raging. It is also the day after I finished my new book, a novel set in part in France during the 1540s, when white Christian men were defining modern Europe, setting off to explore the world and tame its wildness. My manuscript has been handed in, and as far as this essay is concerned, I'm free to write what I like. But something from the past lingers, or rather, someone. I'm thinking about the most powerful woman in Europe at that time, the author Marguerite de Navarre, whose humanist writings were crucial in shaping Europe during the Reformation and the French Renaissance. She was a French queen and princess and has been called the first modern woman. Upon reading this, I wondered what it meant and what it said about all the women who'd come before. Hadn't I read that Christine de Pizan, living over a century earlier, and who was said to be the first woman to make her living as a writer, was the first feminist? In that case, what was the difference between a feminist and a modern woman? As you can tell, I wasn't really used to reading history. I didn't have a particularly developed understanding of how it stretches out behind us and is constantly being rewritten. That all modern women aren't necessarily feminists had, however, long been clear to me. I'd often been reminded of this in my 25 years as a feminist writing in Sweden. At first the idea was shocking, but in time I would make sure to always bear it in mind. All women are not feminists, all feminists are not women, and all women are not the same. Even in a comparatively equal society, women differ in so many ways that one can hardly speak of women beyond the biological denotation. It's a little different now than it was back when I started writing. Today, it seems all Swedish women identify as feminists. Being a feminist has become praiseworthy. In certain contexts, it's a requirement even. Fem feminism has spread in a way that those of us who came out as feminists in the 1990s were told it never would. We were informed it was a matter for the very few. We were called media feminists by non-feminists and by older feminists whose fight on behalf of women had taken place inside the academy or through activism. And it was said that we didn't know a thing about real women. I'm not going to say that it was hard. In my lifetime, it has never been particularly hard for a middle-class Swedish woman to be a feminist. It has been tiring and lonely on occasion, exposing and unpleasant even, but still comparatively easy. Now when I visit other countries and participate in conversations with readers and other authors, I'm embarrassed by the question of what I've done to bring about equality. My answer is always the same. I haven't done a thing. The freedom and equality I have has been given to me by women from previous generations, and being a feminist today has meant that I am forever looking back at what they achieved while feeling incredibly grateful over my enormous luck as far as being in this time and place. Marguerite de Navarre lived in France between 1494 and 1558. As an author and a debater, she focused on women's freedom, but also on matters of religion, because those were the issues of the time and because they didn't interest her brother, King Francois I, whom she had been raised never to compete with. I'm going to stop there. You can read the rest of the essay in the Comma Press Anthology, Over 28. Uh, thank you for listening.